Good morning everyone, welcome to Morning Prayer. Today, um, Thursday the 22nd of October, I'm in my study again and that's because the weather is just atrocious. I was going to go out to one of the churches but um, I've stayed here instead, um, out later to do other things. So, um, Morning Prayer on Thursday the 22nd of October. If you're following along with readings, um, the psalm set for today is 113, 113. And um, you could also read 115 as um, 113 is quite a short psalm. So 115 is also offered this morning. From the Old Testament, um, we're in 2 Kings. And this week is chapter 19, verses 1 to 19. So 2 Kings 19, 1 to 19. And we, for our New Testament reading, have moved out of the book of Acts now and we are reading from Philippians. And this morning the reading is Philippians chapter 2, 14 to the end. And, and that's the one I will read um, shortly. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our canticle um, this morning before our New Testament reading. I've given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. And so our reading then from the New Testament, from Paul's letters, letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, 14 to the end. And Paul writes, Do all things without murmuring, and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labour in vain. But even if I am being poured out as, I, as a libation, over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you also must be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I may be cheered by the news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's worth you know, how like a son with a father he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. Still, I think it is necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill 
that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Welcoming, welcoming him then in the Lord with all joy and honour, such people, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, as I said last week, we, we've moved on from the book of Acts, the story of the, the apostles, the Acts of the Apostles. And um, we're now going to be working through the letters of Paul. And this letter is a um, letter to, to the church in Philippi. Um, and the church in Philippi is Paul's first church in Europe. Um, so... Uh, a very precious church to him. And he is writing, Paul is writing from prison. Um, we're not entirely sure which prison um, because the letters aren't necessarily in the order that they were written, but but possibly. So he could be, we know that um, at the end of Acts he was headed for Rome and was likely to be imprisoned in Rome. So it's likely that um, this is a letter from a prison in Rome and other thoughts is that it might be Caesarea. But at whatever um, Paul is writing from imprisonment, he has hope that he will be released because he says, I hope that very soon I'll be with you um, when he's writing to the, to the Philippians. But he's writing to the, the church there to tell them how to be, what sort of Christians they should be or what sort of people they should be to be Christian. Um, and he, he's writing about um, how we should be blameless and everything, how we, we shouldn't argue among ourselves. And gosh, do we, do we need that now um, when we look at our Christian brothers and sisters around the world who are suffering? And, and whether we're Eastern Orthodox or whether we're Catholic or whether we're Anglican Protestant, we shouldn't be arguing between us and who does the right thing. We're all Christian people. We're all following Christ. and oh, We just need that unity rather than the, the arguments about who does what and why they do it. Anyway, I digress slightly. Um, so in his letter, he's talking about um, Timothy, who has been with him um, throughout, and Epaphroditus, who comes from Philippi. And the church in Philippi send, sent him, Epaphroditus, to Paul, to minister to Paul in, in jail. Um, so he would help Timothy to, to look after Paul, to feed him, as the jail probably didn't, um, and to look after his needs, as well as, I imagine, um, talking to others about Christ um, in and around the jail. And Epaphroditus has been so ill, we don't know what with, um, that he has nearly died. And Paul is giving thanks um, for his work um, and for his dedication to God, that he came, that he felt ill, that he continued to work, um, and that, that God um, healed him from, from this terrible illness that nearly killed him. And that he is still full of Christ and still wanting to continue to work. But Paul says, I'm going to send him back to you um, for my own peace of mind so that I can feel less anxious about him and, and for you to be able to delight in him. And he can tell you the stories of what's been happening and what's happened in his life. Um, and so this whole book of Philippians actually um, talks about how as Christians we model Christ. So we, we model Christ in how we live day to day and we model Christ in giving our lives to Christ, to God, um, as Christ gave his life, as Paul gives his life, as Timothy gives his life, as Epaphroditus was willing to give his life. Um, and how as Christians we are wholeheartedly in this thing. 
we're not half-hearted Christians. We are fully committed. And reading that this um, reminded me of a book that I had on my bookshelves here, which I haven't read for ages, and I've just picked up off my shelves again to read, to read again, because it, it's probably years. I'm, I'm just looking at it here, and I can't see how old it is, but I probably had it when it came out. Anyway, this is it. Um, can you see that? It's called Jesus Freaks. Um, it's a little bit American, I seem to remember. You know, a little bit over the top. But each um, each of the pages um, is a story of... Um, I've just opened it there. And it's the story of um, Peter Wilder in 1160. Um, but there are stories from people across the centuries. There's one here in 1999 in Cuba. Uh, the story of Rosa in Cuba um, and Laos in 200, uh, 2001. So up-to-date stories of people who have some actually given their lives physically, as in they died for Christ, and um, others who are working and giving their lives to Christ and it's a really an inspira ins inspiration and I know we're not all able to take off around the world and become missionaries um, but there are there are still mission missionary societies we're not quite the same we're not sort of so colonialist and wanting to go and take over but just um, Christian helpers so you know, something that we can do is pray for those mission societies. Um, the Church Mission Society, CMS, is, is still working around the world. USPG, um, which was very much more um, the Anglican Mission Society. Um, that's still working. You can look those up. And there are so many societies all over the, the world. Um, but actually... You know, we can give up everything and go and somewhere that really talks to our heart and um, and get up and go. I'm not planning it, don't worry. Um, I have a husband that does that instead. And uh, the minute he's able to fly, he, he will be off. There's uh, things in the planning at the moment. Um, and he and his, his charity heart... Um, the charity he works for, not his charity, but the charity he works for, do amazing things um, around the world, but not just to Christian people, but um, from Christian people to all people. Um, so there's a lot we can do. Read some books, find out about some people you can support, look at the mission societies, um, look at the charities, Look to Christian charities and see what Christian people are doing all over the world and support them in prayer. Not necessarily having to give our money, but that too. If you've got money, give it away. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we bring to you prayers for the church and for all people. Send your Holy Spirit to equip them and us with the gifts that are needed to serve you. We pray for our church here in North Baddersley and in Ampfield and in Chilworth. For all who attend our services in church and online. And we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters around us in other churches and in our whole deanery, praying particularly for James, our area dean. We pray for our diocese and our bishops, Tim. David and Debbie. We pray that all Christian people and all ministers may serve your church in love and build up all people in truth and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peace and well-being of our world. We pray for our Queen, our leaders of this nation and all nations. 
praying for resolution to deep and bitter conflicts, so many around the world. We pray particularly for our Christian brothers and sisters, especially those under attack at the moment in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh, across the Middle East, in Africa, in so many places around the world. And we pray particularly for those Christians who serve others around the world, risking their own lives for the sake of you and of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for the innocent victims of violence and justice and for all who strive to overcome evil in the world. Praying for the US as they go through uh, voting for their new president or existing president. We pray that your will be, will be done in that place. So we pray for our families and those around us, close to us, and those far off, but in our hearts and minds. And we pray now for all of those on our prayer lists. We lift, Lord, to you, Lord, all those who we worry about, who we are anxious about, and who are in need of your healing. And we think of those who have lost loved ones recently, those who face funerals in the coming weeks, those whose anniversaries are around this time of year, those who have lost loved ones after a long, prolonged illness, and those who have lost loved ones suddenly and unexpectedly. Pray for all family and friends who have come to terms, who have to come to terms with their loss. Grant us with them and all the saints a share in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so the collect for this week the 19th week after Trinity. O oh God, for as much as without you we are unable to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I hope you have a very blessed week and I'll see you next week.